and see what's going on over my head. If we share the charity, yeah, not, not, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Not really? Yeah. I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Tracy City Council for February 26th. Purple and blue trigger. Stand to do the pleasure. I pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you. 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 you. solemnly swear or affirm you support the Constitution of the United States and the State of Minnesota and the Charter and Ordinances of the City of Tracy and do faithfully discharge the duties devolving upon you as member of City Council and of the City of Tracy to the best of your judgment and ability. I do. Welcome aboard. There you go. I was going to have to say that. No. Yes, we have approval of the minutes. Do we have any corrections to the minutes as they are written? Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve. First and second. Is there any? All the same. All but that. Everybody's. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And we have the approval of the agenda. Ms. Mary, I have one addition. Um, 13C. Resolution 2018-13 uh, for the support of Lyon County's Opportunity Zone applications, uh, second series. And this is something Jeff will cover from the EDA. Okay. <coughs> that change? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, no, pro was amended. Second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Then we have any identity of any conflicts of interest tonight? <coughs> and anything from the public that's not on the agenda? Um, the public hearing we can't see yet. We don't have a public hearing. Mm -hmm. um, the reports. Okay. okay. All right, thank you. Um, in the packet, there is a memo from us about the phase three uh, project and some next steps that can be taken to give us the best chance in being able to uh, get in the ground in 2019. Um, RD has indicated they're gonna try to fast track approval of the PER. Um, so they're thinking about 30 days is when we'll see um, comments and then hopefully they'll it'll be a quick pro process to go back and forth and kind of get the, the full scope of phase 3A, we're calling it, which is um, basically 3rd Street and then some side streets. We had discussed that um, last summer. Um, so to keep things going, there are three things that we could do, and then all these costs would be reimbursable once a funding package is approved by rural development. And, um, you know, they don't, they don't pay you back anyway until the first construction draw. So... Um, either way, it's, it's money that the city needs to front, um, but it, it will be reimbursable um, if a phase 3A project goes. So the three things to, that could be um, done now to get further down the road here, uh, private service televising, about 20% of the services, we, we need to know what's going on for design. They're kind of... Um, if you recall in the last project, we had a lot of what we called rogue services, uh, sanitary services that were shared, went under neighbors' houses, wound this way and that, and we needed to televise them, and then they um, put a beacon in the camera, marked it on the surface so that we could survey it and figure out where exactly they were. Most of them in this phase, we know where they are, but there's about 20% of them or so we need to verify to be able to design where we need to put the mains. Um, the rest of them we still want to televise because we're looking for um, 
illegal uh, footing drain connections or um, cracked service pipe, things that are uh, non-compliant with city ordinance and, and allowing groundwater into the sanitary system. So either way, we want to get them all televised as far ahead of construction as possible to let people know if they do need to make a correction, they'll have more time to plan for that. Um, so the private service televising, um, Empire Pipe Services did it last time, um, and they uh, gave us some updated pricing. We're estimated about $33,000 to um, televise approximately 111, I believe it was, services. Um, the next one is the initial design survey, which is where our crews would go out and you know do the topographic survey that you need for design. Um, get existing grades, all the existing surface and subsurface features that we use as the basis for design. And then the geotechnical investigation, um, AET gave us a proposal for 6,800 to do soil borings and let us know what the subsurface conditions are of soils. Um, and that also, uh, if it comes to it, hopefully it won't during the PER phase, but sometimes in the past we've had to kind of defend our proposed pavement section to rural development. Um, we basically have to show them that we're not we're not adding the Taj Mahal compared to what was there. So we have to kind of justify that we're replacing what's there, and that's what the soil borings will show us. So those are three things that um, I guess the the next steps, the next logical steps to take to keep <coughs> things moving forward and put us in a position for 2019 construction. So any, I know. Ku and uh, Councilman Jones, you, you know, haven't been involved very in very much detail with this. So I've offered it to other, you know, new council members. If you ever want, sit down. We could come down, come to town, and kind of give an update on what this project has been and, and where it's going and what the thought process is. So feel free to reach out with for that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So you know, I have one question. So, yeah. so does real development? Like, I thought one time it said that you only can get so much from them, like the, the grants and the loan. Yes, and right. there's, um, there's a, a maximum amount of grant you can get on a project, um, which in general their overall max is like 75% grant, which in practice I don't think the city would even be eligible for because that's for, you know, the extremely poor communities typical, but even in practice, um, they typically only max out about 30%. But what we're doing, um, just because of the, the amount of money available, they rarely give anything over 30%. But what um, we're doing by looking at all of phase three, which is, um, I think it was 10 or 12 different sub phases, which we're, we're lettering basically. So this first, first third street area is phase 3A, we're calling it. We looked at cost estimates for, for all of those and uh, the potential cost for both sewer, water, storm, and then just what they'd call ineligible, meaning um, it's not it's not directly related to the improvements of one of those utilities, but say it's curb and gutter outside of what the trench width would be. That would be a city cost. Rural development doesn't necessarily pay for that if it isn't like right over the utility trench. Anyway, um, we look at all those and that that's what they use to underwrite. So instead of um, instead of paying for this next phase, just issuing loan only dollars, and then the next one, loan only, loan only, because if it was a standalone project, that's probably what you would get. And then all of a sudden you get to the last one and your maximum affordability in terms of like debt services maxed out, then they can't front end or they can't load those last few phases with grant only because then they run into their own maximum per project so what they're trying to do is take some knowing that these projects are going to happen in the future these other phases they're taking pieces of this grant and putting it with every single phase so we don't all of a sudden run into some max and lose out on grants money that could have been experienced so it's um i don't i don't know what word to use fortunate generous but it's good that they're doing that in not in not uh, making you only get a loan and then at the end, turns out you reach some max and you don't get as much grant money as if you maybe had one done one huge project, which is quite an undertaking, obviously. Was that a rambling enough explanation? Does that, that make so sense? Have like a cap, like the Tracy, you know, the city Tracy can't, doesn't have a cap like that you can get. 
Is one project after another one? In terms of um, like a flat dollar amount, you mean? Yeah. I don't believe so, no, no. So they, they've um, appreciated the way we're going about this and um, you know, have asked other questions even about the subsequent phases, even though we're not necessarily asking for that money now. They want to get a good handle on what's coming down the, the pipeline, so they're, they're planning for it. The, the PER is being written for, to cover phase three A through Z. Then. Yeah, um, B and later on is quite a bit higher level. It's yeah. more planning estimates in phase, and then phase three A. We're calling three A, and then there's actually a potential. There's some spots in town that are good candidates for lining. If funding is available, we would propose to include that in three A because it doesn't really. Some of the other phases you have to do in a certain order because of depth and things. But if you're just lining existing pipe, rehabilitating it, if the money's there, we can do it at any time. Um, but yeah, we're so in the PER. We have estimates for all these different phases, but then we're saying, but we're asking for, right now we're asking for 3A and this lining. And the funding is going to be RD grant and RD loans, or are there going to be bonds required? Or? Uh, there'll be um, RD grant and loan, and then potentially state with grant as well. So I, I talked with the um, Rural Development Program Director last week. Um, and that he was asking some, me some more specific questions, made sure he understood what we're, what we're asking for in the PER. And they're working with the Minnesota Public Facilities Authority and, the, um, and seeing if there's anything in the bonding bill too. But as far as city money and city bonds, there will be some ineligible portions of the project, just like there was on phase one. Right. Um, and you'll likely need some sort of interim or uh, temporary bonding because like I, like I said earlier, it's the way RD's funds work is the city needs to pay for all the upfront costs and then it can't make any draws on any previous expenses in, until that first construction. Um, so basically after the first month of construction when the contractor asks for their first um, payment, that's when everything else, um, our fees, televising, um, the geotechnical report, a bunch of other things, if there was any... Uh, land or easement that need to be purchased we don't foresee any on this phase all that stuff you guys need to pay for up front and then once that first pay application comes in from the contractor that's when you can get reimbursement for that I, that's how it worked on phase one right or did they <coughs> yeah when we because the start of phase two on most of it for like the smoke testing and all that from back years ago that finally got reimbursed here now so I mean, you sit on it for a while, but it does yeah. come back. I mean, either way, you're paying for it. Yeah. One way or another. And these ones, now we're into the utility phases. And I know the first two phases took quite a while to finally get in the ground. But phase one, everyone was, when I say everyone, I mean, you know, the state and rural development. They were all in agreement on that one pretty early on. It was the treatment where we're going to put these ponds and for the longest time, those two were married. And then finally, rural development said, okay, well, we can split them. We agree on the utilities. That's not going to change no matter what happens with the treatment site. We know we're going to do this part in town. Let's go ahead and do that. And then phase two finally finally got going and should be mostly wrapped up this year. Okay, thanks. Okay. So if, I guess what we're looking for obviously is direction to move forward with one or any one of these three or all of them, um, just so we can keep things moving. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. You want to take any action yeah. on this oh, one? Yeah. Do we? Do you want to do that now, or do we? Is that what you want now tonight? It doesn't need a resolution. Just. To just yeah, I think just a motion. Yeah. Yeah. I would make a motion to go ahead and, and give the approval to proceed for phase 3A for the um, televising design survey and field tech. I'll second it. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I think I'll add one thing.
we'll help Shane and we'll put together kind of a, a memo to send out to these property owners so they're not all of a sudden getting a knock on their door from the televising <laughs> company to let them know um, you know what we know so far anyway that we're gonna start looking into this so what, the when do you plan to start on the I think that we talked to him on the way here uh, he was actually on vacation until today so we tried to yeah. catch up and get some numbers verified but they prefer to do as much as they can in the winter here because their busy time is is the summer um, but I think it'll start right away and we'll we'll let them know which are the more critical for us from a design standpoint hopefully they'll focus on those do so. homeowners need to do anything or do they come in do they do it from the house in? Yeah, the house they're going to do them from the house in. They, they have a lateral launch um, device, but th this was a segment that we had televised last year, or 16, I believe it was. And um, a lot of these mains, they couldn't even get in. And with the lateral launch, you need to get in the main and then shoot up the service. And a lot of these mains are in such poor condition, they couldn't even get in. So I think they're planning on doing all of them from the house. Yeah, okay. so they'll have to set up appointments and I'm sure the property owners will want to be there and yeah. Just like you said, just so people know and all of a sudden yeah. there's a knock at the door. Right. Right. Is the ground not too frozen to do that? The televising? Yeah. Can you get in there? It's all in, within the pipes. So, so they'll like go through a floor drain, just stick a push camera oh, through. That's all they do that? Yeah. So every once in a while they'll maybe have to pull a toilet or something if there's no clean out or something that they can access. Otherwise Yep. Yep. Okay. And if they do call a toilet, they have plumbers doing it, so. Right, right. Yep. Thanks. Excuse me. Do you have a business card? Yeah. department head or is this okay um, lots of things going on I've actually had last week was rather busy as far as fire calls went um, all the firemen are doing their first responder refresher right now for four hour nights to keep current on that um, we have a new fireman getting on first Monday in February John Zong is his name Other than that, basic day-to-day -day stuff going on. Uh, end of the year stuff's done, turned in. I think uh, next couple weeks, Shane and I are gonna get through the capital improvements for the fire department, get them up to date. So that'll be in front of you here shortly. Other than that, I really don't know a lot. Any questions for me? Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have anything for you other than my activity report. If you have any questions on that. Okay, I just want to highlight a couple things on my report. Um, I've been working on our annual report to State Library Services. This is something we have to do every year. Um, we report everything from circulation to attendance at programs, number of programs, all our financial data will all be on there. Um, it'll go before the, before the library board this week. And I just want to talk a little bit about a program that we have coming up on March 26. We'll have an, an antiques appraisal program, and so we'll be doing sign-ups for that. And because of that, I won't be here for the meeting on the 26th. So you'll still get a report from me in writing. Um, and then did you want me to talk a little bit now about the Plum Creek Joint Powers Agreement that's on your agenda a little bit later on, or do you want me to talk about it then? Okay. So um, this is something that we have been working on trying to get updated. Um, our last agreement dates to 2001, so it's long overdue for this to get done. I realized that the council did approve um, this agreement. Um, it's probably been a little over a year ago now, and some of the councils or counties um, 
suggested changes, so we went back to the drawing board and now we're hoping to finally get this approved. Um, so basically this agreement is between all of the counties and cities and library boards that are in the Plum Creek Library System. We have about 20 libraries in the system and a couple of those have um, branches also. And I think it just um, summarizes it really well if you see the purpose. Um, we share materials and resources, collective purchasing, um, advocating, and then um, sharing, working on programming and collections. And the two main things that I feel are important are the shared library system, that's our catalog that we all use, and our delivery system, that's how we get delivery. We share items um, twice a week. We get things in from other libraries and send things out to others. So um, I don't know if anyone has any questions on this. Um, I realize it's, it's hard to completely understand it unless you're living it. <laughs> But I, I can try to answer any questions the best that I can. Otherwise, it's my recommendation that you go ahead and approve this. And I anticipate that the library board will also approve and sign it this week. Did you have any concerns in it at all, Val? I do not. Um, I've gone through it several times. We had a committee um, of librarians who worked on on this, and I'm confident that they that they did a really, really good job, so. Do you need us to do something about the agreement today or do we wait until after the library board has done that? Um, you can go ahead and approve it. Um, all of the different boards and um, councils and counties have to do it individually. Okay. Um, so it wouldn't be say the library board approving it and then recommending that you approve it. Um, basically, I'm recommending to you and to the library board that you approve it. Okay. Yep. Lyon County also um, approved it. So. Do we have a motion to approve it? We don't yet, but I'll make a motion to approve it. <laughs> Perfect, do we have a second? I'll second. First and second, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Do you have a do you have a signature page for that, Pam? Yeah. Okay. I don't yet. Yeah. I usually don't get until the end. Okay. So then, if you just want to, yeah. so then we'll just take care of that later. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Jeff, would you like to go? Sure. I want to thank Shane and Diane for getting that uh, resolution later that we're going to talk about. On uh, I gave that to them about three thirty this afternoon, so they. I appreciate you getting on that. Just an update from the EDA. I'm um, just going to go through the list. I think you've all got it in front of you also. But the uh, Third Street townhomes um, or the fourplexes over there, the uh, you'll be voting on that, I think, on the 26th to go through. Once that does go through, that'll be a, I'm just going to give an estimate through after realtors' costs and other costs that we've incurred, um, right around $195,000. That'll be coming to the EDA city. So that'll be... Uh, nice money to be able to use in a lot of other projects so um, but that should get it pretty closer that hopefully it will all be taken care of by the end of end of March now um, just to uh, that to be the last time you'll see the Masonic building demolition project on there working with deed a little bit and I know Dan was working with them a little bit just to get a couple of the pieces of paperwork that I was really unfamiliar with trying to get it all taken care of so that should be the last time that should be on there. Uh, Lewis Drug on there, the opening went smooth and just uh, through the the owner and employees out there, it's it's uh, they're busier and all get out compared to what they are up here. They've got so many new new prescriptions and everything coming in. So it was a, it was a extremely good move to go out there. Um, hospice is, uh, you know, they got the groundwork done and all that, but it's, uh, they're looking for their capital campaign to get up another hundred thousand dollars and then they'll start they still think that they will be able to do that right around hopefully the first part of may or june they think they're going to be able to get that taken care of they're hoping anyway working with a nate over there on that and just trying to get updated on that um we can skip the tax abatement for now the red rooster site you'll see a sign up in front of the red rooster here pretty quick through the tracy development corp who uh, i've been working pretty closely with just to 
you know, it's part of the EDA's job to get people to come into whether it's a building owned by a public entity or a private or nonprofit or whatever. So I'm I'm doing a lot of work on trying to get the right fit for that location down there. I've got tons and tons of ideas. So um, the demo loan program will be coming up here in uh, the spring, be starting. And there's already one applicant for the demo loan program. And what that is, is if you don't remember, it is going to be if you've got a house in town that that's dilapidated, it's not, you're not going to be able to move anybody and it's not worth fixing. So the EDA is going to take part in borrowing as much as I believe 75% of what it costs to demo, demo the, the property itself. So I think that's a good program because we've got plenty of those. I've got a, I did a housing study on my own just going up and down the streets and and uh, there's plenty of those houses here in, t in town that we need to get rid of. And if we can't do anything with them, we got to do something with them because they just can't sit there. So that'd be another thing I'm working on. The Hmong Community and Cultural Center is, is something that I believe that's going to take shape this year. Um, I know uh, we have uh, a party that would like to come here from that community and, and actually present to the City Council and to the EDA. We're getting that arranged hopefully, hopefully in March or April where she can come up here and, uh, and, and just talk to everybody about where, what direction they would like to go. Um, and then the last one I've got on the list here is the uh, Lights and Beyond building was uh, through the EDA was was helped purchase by a group out of Marshall and out of uh, Nicollet, Minnesota. Two parties came together and bought it and Lights and Beyond will be open in two weeks. So that'll be going on uptown. Plus there's a couple other things that are going on uptown that I can report on maybe, maybe the next time. So there's lots and lots going on. Lots of good things. Good, thank you. Questions? Nothing? Am I ready? Your moment. So we'll just kind of summarize this. I'll if you had a chance to read my report. Um, just been doing some maintenance at the shop and uh, of course we're thinking positive and starting with lawnmower maintenance here in the last few weeks. So. Um, we had a short meeting with Minnesota Energy. Um, those ugly regular station, regulator stations around town are going bye-bye this summer, so I figured I'd pass that along to you. Um, there's four small ones. The only thing that'll be left, only one that'll be left, would be um, the new one they put up by the elevator. Uh, the rest of them, like on the corner of Center and 14, those two will be gone. There's one on Sixth Street, and there's one in the alley, not too far from the fire hall. So, um, getting ready, lining some stuff up for the pool, getting lifeguards trained, and that with Shannon. Um, we had a meeting today with the airport. Uh, to review the master plan. Um, you have some stuff in your next packet here for the first March meeting on that. Uh, well six, they're getting that repaired um, hopefully in the next week. Um, get that back up to capacity again. Uh, it's kind of been falling, falling downhill on the performance the last year so they decided it's time to pull. Um, other than that, moving snow last few days quite a bit and uh, just doing some year end and beginning of the year organization getting permits and reports done for various agencies so you have any questions? I'd just like to say thank you and pass on to the people who put a great job on the snow removal this week I mean Sunday morning the church crowd didn't have to worry about following through drills or anything so Appreciate it. I will pass the message on. You know, and I have one question I need to ask you. We'll see what y'all think of that. But you know how, like, every boss is like, if somebody can't come in, they kind of fill in, you know? So would it not be a good idea for Shannon to have, like, lifeguard training? So 
will they ever run into that situation? Like, remember how last year they couldn't like have a pool open? They didn't have enough lifeguards. What do you think of that? So they're on fire. An assistant manager would have to work then while she's there. But it might be easier to have an assistant manager work for her to do that and somebody cover a lifeguard so they can still have the pool open. You know what I mean? Do you remember yeah. last year when they did that? Yeah, I know, I know towards the end it gets rough because they have all the camps and everything. Uh, so. I was just thinking about that today, I wonder. I could ask her. Just one of the managers. Okay, should we move on to the city council, city administrator search proposal timeline? So in your packets, you'll have a memo from Wendell um, to the council, and also the timeline, which is the same timeline that I gave out at the last meeting. So, for your review. At the last meeting, Dave, you had questioned if the council should relook at what we had set for guidelines, guidelines and that for applicants. Is that something Did we you send them back? Or do we have a copy of that still? I haven't. I looked for his ad online. I couldn't find it. So I, I've never. Because now would be the time, if the ads are going to go out in April, if I remember the timeline yep. correctly, now would be the time we'd want to look at what we said we wanted for our qualifications and that and see if we wanted to differ from it or keep it the same or what. I think they would add five to seven. possible right now but it could be five to seven they're going to want one hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars because of the qualifications that were set yep well I don't, I don't know about all the taxpayers but I don't know if they're going to want us paying one hundred and fifty thousand dollar salary and so I, I don't personally know I was going to go back in old minutes to kind of look and then I thought well if he's going to be running the ad he should have that pretty readily available to pop it back to us to relook at it i have i might be able to find the original ad but i know he, he revamped that after we yeah got yep. him aboard i'll say if we can get his ad and have him just send it back and we can look at it next meeting and see if tweaks that we want to do to it Thank the, other, the other question from last time was if they reached out to folks and said that applied that before. applied and you didn't meet the the yeas or nays yeah an answer on that I called Diane today to ask her too because I was questioning my memory of this is like we're not paying we're only paying him for advertising or what is it that we're actually paying him? travel and travel his it's lodging it's per diem Lodging if it comes here, right? right. His, He's not going anywhere. His costs are minimal. Yeah. Until we get to like the interview stage. I'm assuming if he's going to be no, involved he just in sends the interviews. Them to us. He sends them to us. Oh, Honestly, okay. I still question what he's actually doing. Weeding out. Put the professional eye on the resume instead of us doing it. He's going to drop the pool of candidates and say, they told me they want this. These people are qualified for that. And then he was going to set up a small interview council for council group for the council members, right? And you weeded down to six, I thought. Yeah, and then weeded down to two or three and then yep. do the main. But it's it's a minimal experience. Do we have to do anything with this timeline, or is this just our information? Because we already approved it last time, right? Just information. It, it wasn't a, approved. You could table it and wait on these items for next meeting one if one you one. want, or however you want to proceed. How does, how does that timeline fit with your schedule, Shane? 
because that's that's rolling into that. I know I'm leaving for a week to go fishing in June. Oh no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So unless someone can sign back. checks when I leave. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my main yeah. thing right now because, you know, the pool, I can always shoot out for a few days because um, Kim plans on coming back next week, so that's going to alleviate. Well, well, let me rephrase this then. And when you get to the point where you, you think of an intern with help, we let the council know. Yeah, I can do that. And then my once hair's gone. Out to go fishing and not coming back. To yeah. <laughs> Leaving the country too. Yeah. <laughs> well, now he's scaring us. <laughs> okay, I'll get that information for you. I can or Dale can or what are you what are you looking for? Just what we've done in the past? Just a little history as to why it's here. Sort of on the same sheet of music and the public's aware. You, can, you can explain it better than I can. So around the first of the year the city sends out rural contracts. Um, Shane had called and asked if I could come visit with him and Diane. They were trying to get the contract sent out as we started looking through some stuff <coughs> back in 2012 the league had sent out I believe in 2011 the formula for rural township contracts the council at that time said that they wanted the fire department to go ahead and complete the complete the formula and come up with a adequate adequate fee schedule for billing for rural townships um, at that time, we did go through and implement, fill out the formula, come up with a rate, set up a 10-year plan. Um, it was presented to the council. The council decided they wanted to move ahead forward, forward with it. Um, a few years after that, there was some minor conflict going on in regards to it. And the council had decided at that time that they wished or that they were going, the council and the administrator were going to take over the township contract portion. Um, now to current, there was some documents that we were having a hard time locating that we were able to, you know, relocate and put together, I guess the spreadsheet you have in front of you that shows kind of what the past was, the present is, and what the future was based off what we were supposed to do um, at this point time, we're obviously are behind what we were supposed to be charging and I guess how we get to where we agreed in 2012 that we were going to be is up to you guys. Is that kind of a good blanket? It's a good synopsis. So, what we're doing. so in 2012, is when this 2011 state, 2011 is when the state came out with their recommendation the league of minnesota cities came out they came the out with their recommendation but it was not a mandate it was not a mandate the recommendation to help cover the recommendation was because there was <clears throat> the city as an entity was billing for something without a fee schedule or a, a formula at how they were arriving at how they were going to charge so there can be a big discrepancy from city to city if we don't follow this recommendation. Correct. Okay. Correct. City A, <clears throat> A, B, and C could have followed the recommendation, um, and everyone else could have decided could have chose not to. Now, to be known, we did not follow the formula to a T. Following the formula to a T put us at it was between eleven and twelve hundred dollars. My memory doesn't correct me or doesn't 
come to me that far back, but it was between eleven to twelve hundred dollars a section. Um, at that time, it was looked at with a, a group of fire chiefs in the county, and there was some changes made to the formula, putting it at a cap of right around six hundred and forty-four dollars total. In the, I believe at that time we actually stretched it out twelve years. Um, to get from where everyone was at to that number, it was kind of agreed at a 15% increase until we hit that point. Then once that point was hit, it would level off, maybe a cost of living increase, or you know drop down to that one to three percent increase per year. Was the intention in 2012? So, if I'm understanding this correctly. What we're looking at is the townships pay the city to provide the fire services to Correct. their homes, their properties, whatever. Correct. The taxpayers pay the city for the fire services. Correct. And when I look at this graph that was included in the packet, it looks like the taxpayers are pulling quite a large percentage of the cost historically <clears throat> historically we have approximately 60 percent of our calls are based in the rural community um, historically approximately 20 percent of the fire department's budget is made up from rural township rates um, two total separate entities we're still one fire department two total sets of different needs I mean fighting a fire in the city limits of Tracy I need two trucks and we hook up to the hydrants that run off the water tower fighting a fire out in the country we have to haul the water we're also hauling the water 90% of the time from the hydrants from the water tower that the city is providing as well um, we don't really have cornfield, bean field, grass fires in the city limits of Tracy. We can't fight a cornfield fire with our large pump truck or our large tankers during the spring and fall, especially when it's wet because they'll be stuck before we get five feet into the field. So yes, I mean the city, the city taxpayers are paying for a large amount of equipment that does not need to be used but is also protecting, that is used for protecting the rural community. Which I feel is a, a vital part of our community. I very I mean, much the agree. rural part is. But I think what the state, if I have done a little bit of my homework correctly here, what the state was trying to do I'm going to correct you with the League of Cities. No, the League of Cities, and I wrote that down so I would quit saying the state. The League of Cities was trying to do was maybe to try to even it out a little more, maybe not make it 50-50, but to try to even it out that the city taxpayers weren't carrying the bulk of the load for the whole diverse community. The big issue in 2012 was the amount of testing requirements, training, the amount of dollars that the city was putting into the fire department to help disperse that out you know because not only is it you know we have to have these special piece of equipment that we use only in the rural fire service but to help cover some of the costs for operating the fire department as well because you're getting the same amount of firemen whether it's in town or out of town I mean when the pager goes off the same people show up whether we're going downtown Tracy or whether we're going 10 miles north of Tracy so I think the whole theory was to try to help, you know, generate a little bit of revenue towards helping manage and operate the fire department and do it in a, in a, in a safe and, you know, let's say, so we're following, following the majority of the life safety rules that we have to, that we have to follow. You know, service and testing our, our life safety equipment, like our air packs, our turnout gear, um, our fire trucks. Our, you know our main our main engine truck so that when we're going into a building um, not only are we not liable for the fact of something does break you know that we didn't do our due diligence in upkeeping the equipment and testing the equipment 
but we're also protecting our, our volunteer firefighters, giving them a little bit of a safety blanket, knowing that you know a third party is coming in here each and every year and they're tearing apart every air pack that we have. And for those of you that have never seen an air pack, it's a 15 minute process just to take the mask apart and put it together. That doesn't include any of the testing of it. And they have a, a mannequin head that they set on there and they put the mask on and they go through all the working operations of the air pack, all the alarms, all the safety features, all the bypasses, all the connections for a, a rip connection or for a, a trapped firefighter. You know, and, that, and that's just this one expense is that the company that comes in and tests our trucks is here for, was last year they were here for three days? And, and that's not the engine that drives the truck, the brakes, any of that, that's all done through the public works. That is just the pump on the truck. They go through every valve, they go through every switch, every control, they go through and completely service, inspect it, and then they take the truck out and it has to pass a, a pump test to be rated so that A, so that quote unquote it's not going to break down during a fire, but also them tests save the taxpayers of the city and of the immediate rural community by lowering our ISO rating, which helps everyone's insurance get a lower insurance premium. I mean, I understand this is a touchy subject because we're talking. This is a very touchy subject. Um, money for people. Um, when you're talking per section rate, that's not farm land acreage type. It's per section, whether your section has four farmhouses and a huge cattle operation, or whether it's all CRP land, whether it's all cornfield. Okay, it's it's, it's a flat rate per section, which <clears throat> is why when that formula came out between eleven and twelve hundred dollars, we actually took all the farmland, all the valuations of the farmland out which is what got us down to the $644 per section back in 2012. I feel like I'm monopolizing the discussion here. I feel like you're targeting me right now. I'm no, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm trying to make sure I understand it and people that are watching it now or watching it in the future because people that live out in the country might not be getting this but when they hear we're talking about maybe raising our rate um, to them to provide fire services they're going to go and watch the recording and I want them to kind of have some of the background to know when we make a decision why we're making the decision we are making and what it's based on. So by no means am I trying to no, I, target I, and you. No, I appreciate that we're because it's getting not it you, all Dale, out there. It's us. It, and, uh, it's us. Exactly. Be Six set. years ago when this was taken away from the fire chief and to be handled by the city, six or seven years ago now, um, everything was pretty much formally decided that here's the schedule we're going to go off of and this is what we're going to charge. And, you know, a lot of things have changed in the last five or six years people come people go you know so it, it I mean it ultimately does fall back to at no point in time is it ever my decision what you're charging it is purely up to the council what they decide to do well and ultimately the council decided back in 2012 <coughs> or 12. 13 2000. that this was it so really all we have to do is either say we're going to continue this and we have to kind of decide what we're going to do with the little void when we had turnover in a city administrator so a letter wasn't sent and everything but otherwise this was already decided by a previous council as far true. as I'm concerned true and unless we want to go against what a previous council decided yeah. I guess the only other option you would have is you know to open it back up to do the formula again I, I'm not asking you to do that by any <laughs> <laughs> That, that was really it, at least uh, probably a week and a half of my life. Um, and again, it's going to come back way higher than, than where we're ever projected to get on that chart if we were to go do it you know, fully by the league's, by the league's policy. Yeah. And again, that, and that, that formula was arrived from the League of Minnesota Cities 
and the Township Association sat down together and formulated that. It wasn't just the league who represents the municipality saying, hey, this looks good, and mailing it out. I mean, they, they spent some time in there, and um, I do believe there was a packet that went around that explained how they did the, how they arrived at the formula. The department still that agreed to do this, that was got together and they all agreed on this formula and this track, the bulk of them are on schedule, we're behind, is that? There was, uh, I think one of the departments had a, uh, in a rush issue where it was 398 or 389 and they mixed up two of the numbers, you know, but they're pretty much they, didn't they were they were off by ten or eleven dollars at night yeah somewhere in there otherwise everyone else that did this um which is mainly to the north of us that did this is on track for it um at the chiefs meeting we hosted here in april last year um there are other in our in our region now and again our region kind of is goofy Lyon County is supposed to be in the region above us, but the line is actually Highway 14, and being all the city offices are south of Highway 14, we're in the region, we're on the very north end of our region. Um, there are a handful of departments in, actually, I believe there's eight departments in our <coughs> region, which is now 54 fire departments, that are using the formula or something similar to it, or where their rates are comparable to the rates that the formula came up with here. Ultimately, it, it, it comes down to it's an expensive operation to own. And short of cutting corners on life safety um, for the people we're protecting or for the firemen that are providing the service or cutting corners on equipment, which, I mean, everybody in here owns a snow shovel. They never want to have to use it, but when they need it, they're glad they have it. You know, our, our toolbox or toy box is, you know, every tool in that rescue truck, we train on three, four times a year. Every time we train on them, when we put them away, we hope we never open them, never have to take them out again until another training. But when we take them out, they have to work. I mean, the, the sickest feeling in the world as a parent is standing there when your child is sick or your child is hurt and not knowing what to do, you know, put that to an emergency situation where somebody's stuck in a grain bin or somebody's pinned in a vehicle and you show up and, oh yeah, this thing's 30 years old and doesn't run or this thing won't start or you know, technology in extrication tools with the technology and vehicles out there nowadays. I mean, every time buying a set of JAWS is like buying a computer. By the time it actually gets to the fire hall, there's a new style of vehicle out and this thing's barely able to cut through it. So. It's an expensive, but it's obviously necessary. So, <coughs> reading it, The per section rate for the last calendar year is three thirty eight. We collect that. Or last year's premiums were all collected. Mm -hmm. I was just looking here. The looks like the highest section township is Amaret. They have thirty five sections. To go from the three thirty eight we're at now to the four forty seven, they're looking at thirty eight hundred and fifteen dollars. So that'll be the worst hit township. And nothing changes till essentially till two thousand nineteen. No. We're <clears throat> the contract we're sending out right now um, takes effect May first. May first, okay. Uh, rural contracts run May first to May first. In 2012, what was decided was May 1st, a township would hand in their contract, and at the first council meeting in May, the administrator, the mayor, and the fire chief would sign them. There's two copies. One copy would get mailed back with a letter of intent explaining what 
the next year's rates were going to be and also at what meetings would be budget meetings for anybody who wanted to come and voice any concerns or thoughts or issues. And if you look through the spreadsheet, you know, it's, there's been a few years where it was doubled, a few years, you know, that it went up and then there was, uh, you know, I don't know, it just hasn't been consistent. I'm just concerned about that large of a jump for the that year. Going from the 338 to the 447, that's like a 32% increase. And that's because we missed a uh, increase in there. Well, and as you look through the sheet, there's been a few years where increases were missed. So, yes. You know, I, and I that, agree with you. 30, 30, you know, that 32% is a is a very large number. I, I guess I just have a concern going up that much because of something. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. It was overturn of administration and stuff like that. It, it was missed. I mean, I'm not going to blame Shane. You know, he wasn't the administrator. Better <laughs> than blaming me, but. Well, we can't blame you. It's a council administrator thing. And that's where people need to remember it isn't you. It is a council administrator. And so I just have a problem with jumping to the 32% because of something that is our fault. That I'd rather see it extend out one more year because it is, it's, it's at least getting it up there. But I would like to see it extend out to instead of to 2020 to maybe 2021, where we could stay with that 15 percent that was agreed on by the original council that did this, because then we're not really going against the past council, but we're also not killing the the townships. But I'd like to also see the townships percentage increasing up past the 20 percent when they're having 60% of the calls and the city taxpayers picking up the rest of it. I'd like to see that balance out. I know my country friends probably are not going to be happy with me, but hopefully my town friends will be a little happy with me. But I hope they see the reason of trying to have them pay a little fair share of their part of the department. And I agree, I want the quality of department we have. And, and that's the key thing there is, you know, you as the council decide what you want as a quality of a department and, and what you want your department to do. And I mean, that's all based upon um, my budget requests and, you know, my capital improvements requests as far as what you, ex what you want, what you expect from your fire department. So, you know, if that is what you want for, from the fire department for services, what we're offering right now, then the next option would be to, like you said, to try to get that, that rate increased. So what were you thinking for a, for a number? Well, I'd have to get, I forgot my phone at home. Uh, <laughs> so I don't have my calculator. If you do, uh, if you I did do, this math at home. <laughs> just to verify though, they did collect 338 section for 2017? Yeah. Okay. Well, if you do your 15%, like you said, that takes it up to 388. Or 389. Oh, yeah, because that's on that bottom, the projected rate. That's what it should have been for That's last what year. it should have been. Yep. And that's why I'm saying just push it back a year. We get back on track by going to the 389 this year. And at 447 the next? Yep. And then the f and just follow out on that projected rate. Just what you do is push it about the end of the rate out one out year. One year. Right, that works for me. I mean, it's. We're getting to where we need to be. The, on, the only discussion that lies within that was the group of fire chiefs that went through the time and did the formula, all with the backing of their cities at that time, all agreed that they were going to be at this rate so that we weren't competing against each other. So if we are going to do that, just a simple statement that we're not going to add sections take sections away from other fire departments that are in an unreasonable response area so we're not bidding we're not 
using dollars that, you know, for life safety issues. We're not putting the dollar. And now, is that our decision as to if we add sections or not? If in people in come past to precedents, all this has been fire chief. When it came to the administrator and the council, you know, that part was never discussed as far as what it is. Right now, the contract is filled out. The um, contract is sent to the city. And then once we send in the contract, we update the sections with the county. I just don't want to see us being 20% behind a neighboring department to where that's maybe already on a, a border, a northern, just use a northern border line where a township comes in and says, hey, you're 60 bucks less than these guys. You're going to call them for help anyway because you're out in the country. We're going to need multiple or organizations. I don't want to see the city of Tracy trying to pick up 10 sections that puts us another five miles north of where we're already going because they can get there quicker. But we can control that, right? We, we can, can we, we can, can control that. Request, right? Yes. So then we can protect ourselves that way too. Correct. Whether it whether it stays that I decline it and you guys back me, or whether you want me to bring it to you guys, I just don't want to see us grow our area to where we're not we're not serving effectively. Then we use the, lose the quality that we're just saying. Then we you want lose to the keep. quality. So that would go against what we want to do. So. Or or we get so far spread out if there was multiple calls at one time that it's unmanageable. To simplify things and take you off the hot seat a little bit is if the council steps up and takes care of setting the rates and the decisions as the fire coverage areas and, and getting contracts in and out goes back to the fire chief. That. And that the letter of intent is coming from the council, not from the fire chief. This is what's going to cost for, for our coverage. And, you just and if we actually resolution or motion right. to whatever we're going to do for the next five years or right. 10 years or however long you guys want to do it, if we actually had something like that that was etched in stone, you know, this conversation probably wouldn't be happening right now. But would you be willing to handle it, that end of it then? Sure. And then all the all the complaining can come to, to that podium and talk to the council. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Do so we need to make a new motion on something? I do. I do think if you decide to do more than the fifteen percent increase, that possibly having a special meeting explaining what's going on you know because in in years past we used to they picked up the contracts at the february the february meeting at the fire hall where we went through the fire hall did a, a brief tour showed uh you know when chs bought us all the rescue equipment for grain bend rescues we showed that off when we got the grant for the new tanker we you know showed that off a little bit just showing people what they're paying for you know uh, knowing what their large piece of the pie from their township is actually buying them. Yeah, explain the service life of that stuff, even though you may not have the front cost of purchasing it, you still have the maintenance, inspection, replacement cost because they've got a limited lifespan. Well, it, it, I mean, it's real simple. In 2012, when we did this, the capital improvements plan, we'd bought in, oh, we bought air packs in 2000. Eight, Sorry, 2007 the with the grant when we bought the first draggers 2007 we bought 15 air packs and we bought 32 bottles for $36,000 so five years later we're doing this discussion of rural contracts we're budgeting in there $36,000 for or actually I think we budgeted $50,000 for replacing them in 10 years because they have a 10 year NFPA shelf life we replaced them in 11 years because the funds weren't available in 10 years. We went from 15 air packs to 13 air packs and we went to 24 bottles and it was $98,000. And we bought the same brand, obviously new model number, but everything was consistent other than the requirements that NFPA had set that in order for a company to sell a fire department air packs, they have to meet these NFPA requirements. 
these requirements keep in, you know increasing the prices on stuff so I mean that's one of the things you know we discussed that about how we got a grant in 2012 for 36,000 to buy these and they almost tripled in cost in four, five years so that's one of the things with having the, the meeting and being able to physically show people, you know, that little pile right there is $100,000. I'm not against to a meeting because I think at a meeting you can educate people and when people are educated, they're usually a little more understanding. Even if it affects your pocketbook, you're not going to go out of there maybe singing a song, but you're going to understand why it's going to hit you in the pocketbook. So I'm not against a, a meeting at all I do think we can move ahead because they all were told about the 15 percent plan going through 2020 so that's not going to be new if we agree on that I mean I guess we have to first agree that we're not going to jump up that 32 percent so that we can move forward because we need to get a letter out because need they to need the to know they, they're, they're they need to know May. for their budget process and I, think I mean they most need of their to be able to budget meetings is March is March so the contracts need to hit the mail <coughs> sooner than later so we need to make a decision tonight more or less correct okay. is there any other discussion or do you need us to make a motion but you know what one more time so in 2017 you did get 330 it was supposed to be 389 we were at 338 okay. there between 15 and 16 they paid the same there was no increase yes yeah, so we, we got behind okay. that's where we lost that 15 percent To if you go to the the you column the down, line, the projected rate. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, it'll go up fifty, fifty one bucks. So that's your motion. Well, now I need to know. Okay, so now this is my official. Oh God, I don't know if I want this to be my first one. <laughs> Okay, it'll be my first one since I've been talking. Um, I'll make the motion that we what go up to the 447 and get back on schedule by no. pushing it out one year. 389. Or three, 389. Yeah. And then bumping the end date out. One year. One year. With the understanding that we are not doing this to stay below to steal any sections from another city or anything like that so do we want to revise this yeah to reflect that and then have like a resolution at the next meeting when do you need to get the contracts up? well for now we'd be fine because we have a rate okay a motion and a second on a rate but should we give this to the township so they know in the future what to look at or not or or we actually have time on that you get the contracts out for this year so that's done and you know how it was set up the letter of intent okay. that goes out with the return contract the return sign contract you could have a letter of intent explaining this year's rate and at that time you could also attach the spreadsheet or showing the showing the ten year the ten year projection or the seven year projection I guess what however whatever you want me to put on a projection and then uh, at that time, I guess, if you wanted to have a, a meeting or whatever, that would also go on that letter at that time as to when you were having the meeting and what you wanted to do or when the budget meetings would be if you wanted the meeting here, if you want to do the meeting at the fire station and go through you know costs and hands-on of, of what equipment is, however you guys want to do that. To me, that would all be done in the, in the letter of intent with the signed contract in May. Okay, so I'll make the motion that right now we set the rate at the 338 three no 389 boy I'm dyslexic or something tonight at the 389 
And that's all we need for tonight. To get the contracts out, they need a, a dollar amount. Whether you're going to stick with the 338 because there was no letter of intent sent out this year, or whether you're going to go up. There was no, n there was not a written notification from the city saying that we were increasing the rate this year. Correct. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, they were given a copy of this projected rate. In 2012, there was a complete PowerPoint presentation printed off in a binder that had all the information of how it was arrived, all the figures that, what was what the formula was about, who supplied the city the formula, and then the baseline of what we what the city was had approved to do at that time. Thank you. Thanks, Dale. Thanks, Dale. liability coverage so this is an annual um, thing we do to waive um, normally we waive the monetary limits for municipal tort liability um, there's some we do every year this was brought to me by uh, our insurance rep we need to we have a resolution. There's a motion. Just, just, a motion. Motion. just a motion, yeah. yeah. I'd make a motion to um, waive the liability coverage of the legal associates insurance. Second that. First and second. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Cigarette license for the Tracy liquor store. I know this was. Um, they weren't sure what was going on in the liquor store back in December. And so they did not renew this. I just wanted to double check if that's still your thoughts. Has anybody been complaining because they haven't been able to buy anything? I haven't heard anything. So. You've got people saying anything. It's I have heard a couple people. But it's just a nominal fee, isn't it? To be 150. And it's not like we lose money selling cigarettes, right? Uh, it, we don't make it, much. No, it's, if you look at the margins on the sheets, you can get a little bit of matching the rest of the margins. It, um, it'd be 150, you can have your bottom line. It's so long. Yeah, the cigarettes are in here. It's really expensive. I'm sure. I'm sure. There's pretty much what your other girls' property is. Well, that's the expense amounts of property. Well, these are. Well, we have a thing that they haven't done. I don't know if that's left over inventory or what it is, but. Must. I think that's their quantity on hand, yeah. so just what they had from. And even the quantity on hand, since they didn't have a license, they can't sell it, so right. then it's going to just go to waste. Is it right. Sandy's recommendation that she, I mean, she wants to sell cigarettes? She hasn't cigarettes? said either or. So it's just something that was brought up and wanted to be discussed after the first of the year, after we figure out what they're going to do with the liquor store. What is the cost of $150. $150. For a year? Annually, yeah. Personally, I guess for $150, I mean, that's what, 20, no, not even 20 bucks a month. 12 bucks a month? 12 and a half. Thank you. You're welcome. 
you know, if it gets somebody that if they're in there and buying cigarettes, they buy a bottle or a 12 pack. I mean, I think it's pretty minimal if we're trying to make the <coughs> off sale work. I think we need to do what we can to get people in. I'm not opposed to that, um, but I would like to see the margin brought in line with everything else that they're selling. Bring raise their prices to make them worthwhile. <coughs> So do we need to make a motion? Yep. I'll make a motion that we do get the cigarette license, whatever. At the liquor with, store? At the liquor store. With the for, with, with the appropriate pricing of them. I don't know what appropriate pricing is, but I would think the lady from Olivia, she helped us set the prices for the booze. I would think she would maybe be able to well, tell us. You could even just look what is Casey's charge. Then it, thank you. We, should do. Than we could just make sure ours match everybody else. Yeah, they, were the lowest, everybody. they were the lowest in town before, but I'll second that with the price. Oh, yeah. Kristen, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, so now we're on to resolutions. The, the resolution for canvassing the February 13th special election. <coughs> <coughs> I'd make a motion to approve resolution 2018-11 for the canvassing. I'll second from one of you two. <laughs> I wasn't there. I was just going to be quiet about it. Yeah. Okay. First and second, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Resolution 2018-12, approving payment to Dunnix. What's that one? Yeah, again, sir. It's just some um, catch up. Obviously, they haven't done any work in the last month. Um, the uh, we couldn't pay them until the change orders were formally approved. Um, so this was some work completed under those change orders. Uh, one of them was for on Center Street. Um, they ran into some poor soils, so we cut out an extra foot and replaced it with sand, and that's. Um, after you pay Duddick, the, the county agreed to pay for that, but we're running it through this contract. So invoice the county that, I'll get Shane the exact number, but it was approximately $7,400. Um, another one was for removal of some debris they found under Hollett. Um, just a lot of random <laughs> stuff that we didn't want to bury back under the road that had to be, had to be hauled out. Um, so there's an extra cost for that. And then the bulk of it was for the uh, sewer and water extension for 5th Street for the hospice and that's all accessible back to the the uh, property owners. Make a motion to move resolution 2018-12 payment to Dunnix. I'll second that. The first and the second with all those in favor of that. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. This is both the new one, the zone one. Um, you need some explanation? Okay, I'll, try to, yeah. I'll actually try to make this brief. Um, the reason I need the resolution is, is I'm working with the with Lyon County and it's called Opportunity Zones and that's something you can go into DEED, the Department of Employment and Economic Development, DEED. So go into that and look at opportunity zones. And in a nutshell, what that is, is there was some tax laws that were changed back in December through President Trump that uh, allows lower to middle income areas or sections, sections of, the, of a city or sections of, a, of, a, of the rural America or wherever it might be. But this type of money is sitting out there and it's investments from investors and you got to find the investors but it's money that can come back to those investors if they put the money into um, low income areas so there's things called tracks that are out there and there's 481 of them in the in the state of minnesota 
and they rank them all, and there's 250 of them that are ranked in the lowest 250. Tracy and the northern part of Marshall are the only two in Lyon County that hit that. It, it's, it comes from low income, low income housing, low income, just, just what the per capita income would be or family income. Um, this, all this is, is an application. What the, what the resolution is for is so that the council knows about it, the EDA knows about it, so Tony knew about it from this past Wednesday's meeting, um, and, and Shane does too. But we have to apply for this, so I'll be applying for this with the county commissioners of Lyon County and with the Marshall EDA. Um, again, in a nutshell, what it does is that if, if we can, and it'll take me going out and finding investors to come in and invest in the city of Tracy, but it's very lucrative what the investors can get back from, from tax breaks and from on capital gains and things for, uh, for what they put into low income, low to mid middle income housing. It can also be housing and I also found out in the last couple of days it doesn't just have to be housing, it can be redevelopment of an economic, um, like, like a main street or something like that. Whether it's apartments, whether it's, uh, whether it's um, businesses that wanna move in, there's a, there's, it's, it's diversified. Um, there's no guarantee that we're gonna get the 123, Governor Dayton's gonna read them all, and he's going to pick out of, a, out of the 481, there's gonna be 123 tracks that are gonna be picked. If they pick the ones from top to bottom or bottom to top, however you wanna look at, Tracy would be in that. We are one of two tracks. If you look at it, if you go into that website I just gave to you and there's a map, an interactive map you can put in there what you're looking at, bottom 250, and then you can actually go in there and go to Southwest Minnesota down to Lyon County and you pop it on there and the only two places in Lyon County that, that anything pops up for the lowest 250 is from anything north of Highway 23, avoiding all those newer houses out in the wind and, and to the south part. Of, uh, of Marshall and the other track is directly on Tracy. So is this one where we get we can pick and choose wherever unlike some of the other grants where it's got its it's a couple not, blocks. It's not really a grant. Not a grant it's, at all. But I mean the investment. We get to pick and choose. Oh, I have to we have to find them. That will be my right. job as I, I plan on going to a, they're they're gonna have an investor meeting sometime in April in Minneapolis where you can go and, and you can visit with investors that'll be at their own separate tables that you can go up and talk to them and say, okay, if you come to Tracy, um, if, if, we're, if we're selected as one of them. Um, but if, if we're selected, you come in and you put up a, I'll just give you an example, an eightplex, and it is low income housing. There's like two or three things that, that uh, um, you get to subtract on your taxes, any kind of capital gains that come off of that, as long as you keep them a certain amount of years, it's pretty lucrative. And I will send all that information out to, I think I have to most of you, but you just gotta go in there and look at it. I've been in it, I bet 20 hours in the last four days. And this, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, this is a real cost for us to do this. Zero. That's why we hired Jeff, to find stuff like this. Yeah. Yeah, and there's and, and and I did a housing study like I said earlier, and and the number of houses that we don't have for sale in the city of Tracy, and the number of houses that are empty or will never have anybody in them again, it's I believe it's it's critical, it really is, but uh, and it was nice for me to hear over the past three or four days of digging into it that it's not just the housing market, but you can actually look into. Uh, um, somebody investing in a, a company that wants to come to come to town or so there's some there's and, and just dig into it a little bit and it takes some time but there's some lucrative tax breaks on for people that will invest here but I still got to find the investors too. So now you just answered my question there is a time like how long you have to own the property for? Five five years was the well actually you know what it's it's uh, look when you when you when the, what I sent you some of the the criteria is you gotta you gotta put the money into it into the city but then after five years you get another five or ten percent it's if you keep it for a certain amount of time if you put the buildings up if you put an apartment building up or if you put an eight plex or you put money into the current housing you're going to get a huge tax break but then if you keep a hold of those yourself and after five years or is either five or seven years you get another five to ten percent back on your investments 
so it's lucrative and, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people who are going to understand it a heck of a lot better than I'm going to but it'll also all this is the resolution is for me to be able to show you that it exists and that you approve of me going to get it and I got to work with with uh, Lyon County Commissioners and the EDA and are these specific investors at all no okay. no so I can get my checkbook out I've had one call me already one okay. On a different subject, but when I told them about this, they were interested in that too. They called me about a different subject. Sure. So that's what the resolution is, and then uh, there's a few of you that I sent th an email to today, um, and it's and it's because I'll be looking for sponsors here in Tracy, people who agree with where the direction I'm going. They were looking for nonprofits, so I sent it to the TDC. They were looking for school superintendent, so Chad Anderson already filled his out and sent back to me and then I'll send those in and all that does is show support of, of uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks I can get a couple names of investors from wherever whether it's here or outside of the area that I can have them fill it out to show that we're serious because all this is is an application and once the application in 2018 goes through then they'll start the, it'll it'll kick in in 2019 this is one of those things that we talked about before it's what we do now can help out two, three, four years down the road. Because we have no housing in this town, which will be something that we all have to address pretty quick here. That wasn't a very good explanation of it because you really have to dig into this. <coughs> but I, I think I sent it to pretty much everybody. But just go into DEED, Department of Employment and Economic Development, and then go into Opportunity Zones, and it'll give you about six different tabs and there's one of the tabs that has an interactive map and it'll show you the 491 zones and then the 250 lowest zones but you just it's it's very interactive where you wave your your uh, cursor over the top of them it'll show where it's at and it'll actually show with the not the ranking but it'll show you where you where uh, um, where the county might sit as a as a percentage just just got to read through it the one in the two zones in Lyon County is they were the northern part of Marshall was lower than Tracy was. But that just to put it into perspective, that was the only two tracks or zones there were was that one in Marshall and sitting right on the city of Tracy. No country around or anything like that. Any questions you've got for me, all you'd have to do is call me and if you didn't see it or I didn't get it to you the the email just send me a note and I will send it to you right away but I'll be putting all together all the information together over the next couple of days getting all the people that are going to support it within the city the nonprofits the school and superintendent which I've already got um, a couple of the business owners and I'm looking for suggestions on who else we could get to to support it not that they would have to be an investor but they need to support the reason why we're doing it so would one from the council be anything that you this is your part of it the resolution that knows you know about it is is the part from the council unless uh, mr teagues you'd like to write out a check for a couple hundred thousand dollars <laughs> let me let me get that check going let me on. get chris and she's got the check <laughs> <laughs> okay but if you need have anything just let me know thank you thank you I would make a motion to approve resolution 2813 in support of Lyon County's Opportunity Zone application. I'll second that. Just a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Now should we move on to the I'd make a motion to approve the consent calendar without breaking the revenue and all the other items. Second. Second it. First and second, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I'll do it again. No, I'd make a motion to approve the consent the municipal accounts payable with breaking the revenue. I'll second it. First and second, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Um, any unfinished 
have one to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.